Okay, so uh, finally it comes to the last talk uh, for this uh, conference uh, for today. And uh, um, my, uh, actually I'm Dr. Qing uh, Xiang Chen, and uh, um, I'm from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and uh, from the Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. Um, so today's, uh, my talk is about graphing outside nanofabricated uh, ultrasonic transducers. Uh, uh, so to be easier to remember, I call it uh, go nuts. Uh, so it's uh, probably, it's not easy to like forget. Um, so actually, um, so, uh, so we know that um, for today's ultrasonic transducers, uh, we have like uh, piezoelectric and a CMOS. So these are like two main streams. Um, for today's research topics, and also we have other mater materials, new materials, but uh, mostly uh, based on these two kinds of like uh, mechanism of operation. And I would like to introduce you uh, another alternative for the ultrasonic transducers uh, for today. And uh, the material uh, we are using is graphene. Graphing. So um, we know graphing is um, single layer, uh, single atomic layer of material, or we, or we call it 2D material. Let's only have one atom thickness to be around one nanometer. So for this kind of material, what can be the good thing uh, for the material? Because we can pack, we can pack a lot of layers of these 2D materials to make a high density porous structure, porous structure. And uh, so previously uh, for our project, we tried to use this porous structure to store energy, store energy. So at first we didn't expect this device can be an ultrasonic transducer. We use the 2D, uh, this porous mater uh, material to store charges. And uh, probably you know something about the uh, super capacitor. So you know capacitor can store energy. And the st super capacitor can store energy with high energy density. Uh, that probably can be comparable to batteries. So people would like to use this kind of device uh, for like future uh, electric cars, etc. And uh, for my previous project, I was working on this kind of uh, device. And uh, for the next project, uh, I need to work on a transducer. So I thought about, because I didn't have enough funding to make a new device. So what should I do? I said, okay, I asked my RA. So probably you can try, you can try to use this super capacitor and give it an AC, right? And uh, if it, it works, then you don't need to make a new one. Then the both of us will be happy. So this is the story of the, of finding the why I, uh, we found this uh, device can work. And uh, um, so later uh, I start to study the working mechanism of this device. And the mostly it is based on this um, what we call electric double layer. And uh, the working uh, mechanism of the super is also based on this uh, double layer. So this is the uh, fundamental of the uh, super capacitor. You can see uh, for this interface between the electrode and the electrolyte. So electrode has ions and these ions can flow uh, to these opposite directions and uh, at the interface, so if we, we use it as an energy storage de device, we try to pack a very high capacitance because we can have a very uh, narrow distance between the charges, and uh, this distance can be as small as 0.3 to 0.8 nanometer. That's very, very small. When comparing with CMOT, or when comparing with the dipole distance of the piezoelectric material. 
so it can store high energy. So what if we try to apply AC to this interface? So actually, uh, it has been found long time ago for each double layer, when you apply AC, this double layer can vibrate and it can generate sound. However, because this distance is very small, so the sound it generated is also very small. So, so it comes the important role of the graphene oxide or graphene power structure because we can pack hundreds or thousand layers of this 2D material so we can accumulate this minimum displacement to become something that can generate more power delivery uh, for the ultrasonic application. So I have already mentioned this part. So, um, so if you want to understand more, you can key in this EDL compression, then you can find uh, the fundamental of this. Um, and actually, um, this has been found like a long time ago. Uh, so you know the lens, right? So uh, he also found this mechanism about the uh, electroacoustic phenomenon a long time ago. So as I have mentioned, this is the graphene layers, and we try to make the power structure of graphene layers. And we use hundreds and thousands of these layers to accumulate this minimum displacement that can generate sound. And it can also, of course, can receive sound to generate electric signal. And the good thing about this mechanism is because this device is originally de uh, designed for energy storage because it can store a lot of energy. And uh, it also has a high power density, so it can transmit power uh, very quickly. So we don't need a high DC bias or high DC voltage to drive it. We only need something from one to six volts. This can consider to be very small amount of voltage uh, for the ultrasonic transducers. And uh, of course, we probably cannot go higher because uh, when we go higher voltage, uh, the electrolyte will also be decomposed. So you know, we, we know electro, electrolysis, right? We, it will decompose to uh, something else like gases, etc. So we try to use the compressed comp Flexibility of this uh, porous graphene structure. So when it compresses, it can generate sound. So here comes the beauty of this device. The beauty of this device is you only need a very small investment. You can start to make this device even at home. And the it was not invented by me for this kind of process. It has been reported uh, by UCLA group uh, like three years ago, uh, but they, are used, and they use it for uh, sugar capacitor application. And uh, uh, so for this device, we can use a DVD drive we call light scribe to reduce the graphene oxide material to become graphene. So we can pattern it to become arrays, different kind of patterns, arrays, 1D, 2D, annular arrays, etc. Um, just use a very, I, I would say, a very cheap uh, uh, light scribe uh, DVD drive. And the light scribe DVD drive is used to uh, for the labeling of the CDs. So while you have learned something before, you can use the uh, drive to label the back side of the DVD, and you can have like cover page of a DVD. So this is uh, the, uh, the type of the drive you need. And it uses the infrared lasers at 700 
188 uh, nm meter. And uh, this is the process. You just first uh, drop cast the solution of graphene oxide, and then you uh, wait it to dry. And then you can start to uh, do the laser uh, writing uh, using the light scribe DVD. So this is uh, the process, very simple. And uh, after uh, the making of the electro electrode, you need to do the packaging. The packaging, uh, all you need to do is to use a membrane to separate the two electrodes. And uh, use, uh, you also need to coat uh, electrolyte to provide the uh, electric double layer uh, to the uh, electrode. So this is the packaging. We have two electrodes, and uh, you have a membrane to uh, prevent these uh, two electrodes uh, get in touch. And then this is the electro electrolyte we use. Uh, that is uh, ionic liquid. So why we use uh, ionic li liquid? It's because um, it can give higher uh, potential window. So we can apply higher voltage, like four volts or six volts. But of course, we can also use the water-based, like acid or uh, base, that only can uh, give as high as one volt of the uh, bias. And uh, this is just a test tube. And uh, this is the packaging um, of the device. And uh, um, I would like to show you uh, the uh, testing procedure. So we only apply four volts, 20 kilohertz. You use a square wave to trigger the trigger device. And uh, so this is the, OK, this is the result. So at first, uh, we use the, we try to compare with the uh, ultrasonic transducer made by uh, piezoelectric uh, uh, transducers. And you can see um, for the receiving, uh, for the piezoelectric uh, transducers, uh, so this is the signal of the piezo, and then this is the signal of the, the gold nuts. So we can see uh, their uh, amplitude is comparable uh, to be 0.15 volts. So the input is only uh, 4 volts, and we can get 0.15 volts. So it can consider to be, uh, I would say, pretty efficient. And then this is the uh, another result. So you can see uh, it is also even better than the uh, piezo. So you can see the receiving. And uh, this is result in water. And uh, we use an ultrasonic uh, cleaner to generate uh, the wave and also to compare with the gold nuts. And uh, you can see the gold nuts even give higher voltage when comparing with the ultrasonic cleaner which is considered to be a very high energy delivery, delivery uh, uh, device. Because you use it to clean your like, uh, jewelry, et cetera. So this is the bandwidth. Uh, actually, I didn't use the DV. I used the, just the, uh, I didn't normalize it. But you can compare the uh, band, uh, bandwidth of the, uh, like the wave from the ultrasonic uh, cleaner and also the uh, go nuts, and you can see we have like two, uh, uh, one, two, three, three harmonics. And uh, if you see the, uh, you, uh, you want to, uh, the bandwidth is something around uh, 60 percent. Because we use a square wave to, to trigger it, so the, it is not that uh, uh, high bandwidth. And uh, here comes conclusions. Uh, so what I would like to say is, um, is something uh, just our uh, findings, and we also want to uh, encourage other like uh, friends, like uh, colleagues uh, in this conference. Uh, you can start to pay attention to the development of this uh, device. Probably you can also try by yourself, and to understand. And it's only a minimum investment. The graphic outside is only like uh, probably twenty US dollar per gram, and you can play for a long time. So it's a very uh, and uh, this is your future research. We would like to make some uh, device like uh, using the laser right uh, uh, drive. So uh, it comes to the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you.
for your attention and uh, uh, have a safe trip home uh, from Taiwan. I'm from Taiwan, actually, and I work in Hong Kong. Thank you.